We all have people in our lives that have made certain lifestyle choices, and they'll defend these choices by saying, oh, it's only natural, or I can't help how I feel. But we all know that it is a conscious choice. But this issue is so contentious, we can't even discuss it in certain circles for fear of offending people on both sides of this issue. But those of us with powerful senses of introspection have seriously thought about it. I mean, hell, a lot of us have even experimented with it. You know, maybe on the weekends when no one's looking. But it's time we face this issue head on, because it's often misunderstood and often mocked. And it's time we discuss it in the open. And I'm talking, of course, about veganism. I partake not in the meat, nor the breast milk, nor the ovum of any creature with a face. Being vegan just makes you better than most people. Bingo. While I personally could never ascribe to full-time veganism, I do see the immense value in being a smarter omnivore. And this means a reduction in the animal products and meat that we consume. This will be beneficial not only to our bodies, but to the very planet itself. And in part of doing this, we need to incorporate more vegan-friendly dishes into our daily lives. Did you learn that at Vegan Academy? Go ahead and get snippy, baby. If you knew the science, maybe I'd listen to what you say. And today we're going back to Georgia to make one of my favorite dishes. It is a bean-based dish, but is so hearty and filling, you'll find it hard to believe that it is 100% vegan-friendly. So put away the meat and the dairy, and get ready to go vegan-friendly, because I'm going to teach you guys how to make Lobio. Lobio is a staple of Georgian cuisine, and is present at almost every large meal. And while the dish is vegan, this seems more or less incidental, since it is typically served with meat dishes, most commonly kebabi or tzvadi, which are basically just shish kebabs. To make lobio, you'll need red, brown, or black beans. I've chosen to use 800 grams of brown beans and 200 grams of black beans. The most important part of lobio are the spices. Here I have humeli suneli, usho suneli, and swanati salt. If you don't have access to these spices, it's basically just blue fenugreek with a dash of parsley, basil, coriander seeds, and bay leaves. The central flavor of lobio comes from blue fenugreek and summer savory. These two spices are quite powerful and can easily leave dishes tasting bitter, so be mindful when you season. Additionally, I've added some red pepper flakes, celery seed, and garlic powder. You can also add mint, tarragon, and dill if you really want to take your Georgian refried beans to the next level, but I'm sticking with more traditional flavors. You will also need onion, garlic, and fresh cilantro. As for the texture of lobio, it can be thick, almost porridge-like in consistency, or more like a soup. It all depends on what you prefer. I'll be making it quite thick since I'll be using leftovers for my part two Georgian bean adventure, when I'll make lobiani. I will also be making chadi, a Georgian cornbread that is commonly eaten with lobio. Some people love it, others think it's a dull, dense hockey puck of corn flour, so feel free to try it if you want, it's quick and easy. And for those of you with less than incredible culinary skill, fear not, this dish is incredibly simple. If you can boil water, you can make lobio. Boil water? What am I, a chemist? First, you want to soak your beans in water for 12 to 24 hours and then transfer the beans with the soaking water into a large pot and adding additional water. Also, add bay leaves. Cover with a lid ajar and bring to a rapid boil, and then immediately reduce the heat to medium. It will cook at a low, slow simmer for two to three hours until the beans are beyond tender. Here the beans have been cooking for about two and a half hours. The beans should be exceptionally tender but still retain their bean shape. Now we will drain the beans but keep the liquid. This bean stock is filled with deep, rich, beany goodness that we will reincorporate back into the lobio. This bean stock is basically a soup in and of itself. It should be a dark, rich color with a warm, earthy bean flavor that comes from the long, slow simmer. Now finally dice some garlic and cilantro and cut a couple onions into 
large pieces, the amount of garlic you use is up to you. But in my opinion, you really can't have too much of the stuff. The onions will caramelize in a pan until translucent. Then you will add the garlic and cilantro and cook until fragrant. Then remove from heat and add to the lobio later. Now we'll make jadi. This is a divisive dish, it's either love or hate. I for one vastly prefer American cornbread. I feel like jadi is just too dense and heavy and is only edible if you're soaking up some other dish like lobio or soup. And there's a candy corn in this one. Well, they can't all be winners, can they? Jadi is almost always eaten with a thick slice of cheese on top, but in sticking with the vegan theme, we'll skip it. But it definitely helps to make jadi more, um, appetizing. I used 500 grams of corn flour and added 400 grams of water, but add water until you get the desired clay-like texture shown here. Transfer your beans into a thick walled sturdy pot for seasoning. Add your sautéed onions, garlic, and cilantro, then spice to your liking. Feel free to experiment with different spices if you want to go off book. Flavors of the Middle East and India would certainly be a welcome adaptation to traditional lobio, as would other pepper-based spices for a bit of a kick. Just season, mix, and taste. Now we will add some of our beautiful bean stock to the lobio. The amount you add will be based entirely on how thick you want your resulting dish. Some versions of lobio are more soup than beans. It's up to your personal taste. Now you will mix the beans. With a wide spatula, you will firmly press the beans against the sides of the pot to mash them. You can add additional bean stock if desired and mash until you have the consistency you want but it should look a bit more like vegan chili than refried beans. But again, it's up to you. Once again, taste for seasoning. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Wow, 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 he's a very nice. With the lobio covered and cooking over low heat, you can form your jadi into thin, oblong patties to be pan-fried in oil. In a hot pan with about a quarter inch or half a centimeter of oil in it, you will gently lay the cornbread hockey pucks into the pan. Carefully place them away from you as to not splash hot oil all over your naked hungover flesh. Cook until they detach from the pan and are golden brown. Flip and cook on the other side. Here you can see that the jadi are golden brown and cooked all the way through. Plate the lobio with super thinly sliced onions and cilantro. Lobio should be served screaming hot, like damn near molten so that the onions and cilantro can be immediately mixed into the beans and cooked. Lobio should usually be served with a variety of greens and pickled whatever. It also pairs super well with barbecue and cheese. While my lobio had cooled substantially due to filming, it was still incredibly delicious. The rich, hearty flavors and textures take me back to Georgia. The chutney was as good as could be expected. By soaking up some of the liquid from the lobio, it is definitely an upgrade, but topping them with cheese is very highly recommended. The light freshness the greens and pickles add really helps to enhance this dish, and washing it all down with a nice red wine really celebrates the fact that we've turned the humble bean into a mighty dish. So what did you guys think of this vegan-friendly adventure? Let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer your lobio with or without me? Either way, I really hope you guys enjoyed this beautiful Georgian classic. Until next time, eat well, friends. Keep him!